We now continue with American Entrepreneur. I've been in PR in Detroit since 1973 and when I started I didn't know of any other black females in the business. I'm sure there were some but I didn't know them personally. I didn't know a few men but no females. So it's wonderful to see so many young people in the business and it's also wonderful to see some old folks coming back and still working and, and still having smiles on their faces and making a little money. There's a large number of people out out there though and I want to get real practical with this that don't have the fortune of having the the veteran you know perspectives that you have uh, there's so many individual practitioners who wish that they could make more money and who are deciding you know what I'm gonna go bag some groceries I'm gonna go work from family business they're not making the money mm -hmm. what do you say to them you gotta get in the mix and put in the work you have to um, she mentioned putting in the work I mean people see the end product you know, they'll see a ballot for can or they'll see a major event, a major conference. They don't realize, or maybe they do and they just don't want to do it, all of the work that goes into that, from strategy to, to D-Day of actually doing the event. Um, so a lot of people want to get into it because they want to be on stage behind the podium introducing someone, or they want to be in the room, the go-to person in the room, and they don't realize all of the work that went into it. And if you're not going to put in that work, you're not going to get the job. I think everyone can get that first opportunity, even if it's just as an intern or as a junior person. Once you get that opportunity though, you have to exploit it. You just have to do, bend over backwards and do everything you can. That kind of work never goes unnoticed. It never goes unnoticed. People want someone they can depend on. People want someone where they can throw an event, they want an event done in a month and they know that person is going to deliver an event with the right people in the room. And that comes just with time and meeting people and not being afraid to walk up to a me or, or, or her, her and say, hi, my name is, you know, and just letting me know that you're here. And if you call, I think most PR women know that someone helped us. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody's not going to answer the phone when they get a call. I know I'm, I, I'm definitely going to answer the phone and do whatever I can for yeah. another PR person. Yeah. And it is a cultivation of those relationships right. oh, sure. over time. You know, we've been in the game, Kathy and I, uh, a long time. And long then time. Uh, certainly Tamika's coming right along right. and uh, forging ahead in, in the next generation of young professionals doing what we do. But I tell you, we it's called earning the right. Uh -huh. And we've done that groundswell work. And I will tell a client any day of the week, I may not always get you a yes if I'm pitching your story, if I'm attempting to do some things with a funding, fundraising opportunity. But if I'm going to get a no, I get it pretty quickly because these are people I know. Mm -hmm. And they may say, well, Sharon, we can't do it this time. Yeah. But come back and see us on the next one. This, and that's because you've cultivated those kinds you of You raise an important issue, and there's something that's happening in the industry. And what happens oftentimes as PR and marketing professionals, we'll go to a client, a brand new client most often, and they'll ask us you know, to send them something. And then they'll ask the next person to send them something. And inevitably what happens is they wind up getting four proposals and then they don't use any of us. Mm -hmm. How do we fix that? Well, I think dialoguing, I think conversations, there may be some opportunities where perhaps a Kathy and a Sharon and Tamika need to come together on something to get those larger type of contracts. I think communication is important too. I think once you kind of set what the tone is so that we're not fighting over crumbs. But beyond that, it's a numbers game too. Mm -hmm. It's a numbers game. I mean, you can't, uh, if you're trying to build a firm or build a company or build a practice, it's not about sending out one uh, proposal a week. It's not about sending out two proposals a week. It's about prospecting and getting as many out there as you can. It's a numbers game. The more proposals you have in the street, the more likely you are to have business and have it all the time. Wow, that's you great. You got to keep, it's called prime the pump, I you believe. Gotta, yeah. Prime you the pump, huh? Oh, you got to build that <laughs> yeah. pipeline. And I tell you something else, it's very strategic in deciding on what type of proposals you go after because there are, there are often times that. You're, you may be requested to complete a proposal and you pull together a team and you pull all the factors together, but the decision really has already been made. Yeah. You are there for them to check the box. So you have to really discern that early on because these are talented skill sets and resources. And so when you have that and then you are putting your best foot forward and you know you've given and been told that your proposal is uh, top notch, and then 
perhaps they do what they've always done very traditionally, but because it was required that they get three bids or something of that nature. So some things you may not bid on. There are things I just don't bid for because yeah. I know that the deal is already pretty much done. It goes back to relationship and opportunity. Exactly. So if you have the relationship, when that opportunity comes up, people are going to come to you or you'll know about it ahead of time. And that's what she means sometimes. The deal is already done. But I think that's across the board. That's not unique to public relations.